right, this is John Cole with OKRaw.com to have another exciting episode for you. In this episode, I'm going to share with you guys my blood test that literally cost me like $1,100 to get. It's silly. Um, I don't have any kind of formal medical insurance that will pay for my uh, blood testing, so I have to pay for it out of pocket. Some of the tests are very inexpensive. Some of them are more expensive. If you guys are interested in learning where I get the best deal on blood tests that you could order online yourself and go to a local lab yourself without having a doctor, um, please comment below and I'll talk more about where I got my blood test and the process and how it all worked. I think it is an amazing resource for people that don't have traditional medical insurance like myself. I personally believe that the healthcare system should actually be called the sick care system because it's taking care of sick people. If you eat healthy, Aside from you may be getting in some kind of auto accident or some kind of mishap, you shouldn't have to go to the doctors to get better because you should just be healthy. I mean, animals in nature, like, they don't have doctors, right? They just stay out of trouble, <laughs> are cautious, um, eat what they're supposed to eat, and in general, they're pretty healthy and they're not dropping of uh, heart disease, uh, cancer, um, and all these issues that plague diabetes, that plague Americans today due to their or diet. The next thing I want to say is that I've been on a raw vegan diet now since 1995, so that's now 27 years. Raw vegan predominantly, almost the whole time, maybe the last year, I started incorporating a bit more heat processed foods, but only select ones, and I do it in a very specific way. I'm just not eating any old crap at a vegan restaurant. I actually, I rarely, if ever, eat out link down below to my video on me eating some heat processed foods if you want to learn more about that um, in addition I also eat a very specific kind of raw vegan diet most raw vegans out there might eat a high fruit diet which is great if it's working for you guys do it it's great for my goals and my needs I find that a high vegetable raw food diet works better now yes a raw vegetable base diet is a lot more labor intensive because it means that actually I'm drinking a good quantity of juices because you can't eat enough vegetables really to get enough calories in you and I'm juicing a lot of stuff I just drank like 40 ounces of uh, vegetable juices this morning so far including a quart of green juice um, also that being said I have a very specific style diet right I don't just eat haphazardly oh it's raw it's vegan I eat it I'm gonna be fine and this is what my blood tests are gonna show Right. I've been refining and dialing in my diet for many years now, all the years I've been on this plant-based diet. And you can see, I mean, I'm sitting in my garden. I take it to the extreme that I grow my own food, add nutrients into the soil so that I'll have some of these trace minerals that other people may be deficient in. I strive to eat as much of the fresh fruit out of my garden as much as I can. And I, of course, buy mostly organic food otherwise. Um, you know, I am not on a junk food vegan diet, and you know, I will be the first to say that if you're looking to find a video that says vegans are unhealthy in their blood test, I mean, you're going to find that, guys, because here's the thing. If you guys eat an unhealthy vegan diet, plant-based diet, you know, carnivorous diet, whatever diet you're on, if it's an unhealthy diet and not ba properly balanced and getting a lot of, in my opinion, plant phytonutrients and eating too much processed junk, you know, then you're not going to be healthy. In addition, aside from what you eat, that's only one component of your health. Of course, exercise, getting proper sleep. Of course, you can't really change your genes because um, you're born with those. And some people have genetic dispositions to absorbing different nutrients and dealing with different nutrients in different ways. And also, we must also include the microbiome. And everybody has a different microbiome. And your microbiome helps you digest your food and gets nutrients in you and all these things. And if you don't have the right gut bacteria, you might not make the right nutrients in your body that's then going to get into your blood, right? Super complex. The other thing I'm going to say is that I'm not a doctor. So don't come to this video looking for medical advice. Please consult your doctor. If you have a health care provider, reach out to them. I know some people could, you know, reach out to their health care provider and they do maybe yearly blood testing at no cost, but they might only check a few certain standard tests because I don't have health care. I could basically pay for whatever test I want. I'll share some of the more extreme tests that I did and some of their costs 
some of the tests alone were like over a hundred dollars each, you know, um, and actually, because I wanted to see what they are, because you know, to me, my, my the health is my greatest wealth, and without my health, I don't have anything, because I almost lost my life when I was y younger. So I try to take this as seriously as I can, and of course, every time I do a blood test, I'm not going to say my blood test is perfect and all this stuff. I'm going to share with you guys the good, the bad, and all this kind of stuff, right? And what I could improve on, because maybe this will help me keep me accountable as well because I'm also on my journey and also need to always continually refine the other thing I'll say is that a blood test is basically a snapshot at a point in time just because you get one blood test today doesn't mean you're super healthy if you start eating crap tomorrow you know your next blood test is not going to be as good and we should not just rely on solely blood tests for the state of our health right Health is so many more things than just a stupid blood test that measures our blood at a certain specific time, right? How you feel, you know, how you feel in your body, how you perform athletically, you know, so many different things. And there's many other tests besides a blood test you can do. Actually, I'm doing our microbiome test. It's actually they got the lab, got, got my sample, <laughs> my poop sample. They were so excited to get my poop sample, they sent me an email we got your poop <laughs> we're gonna run your test and I'll likely make a video on that as well because I think microbiome is a very important area of interest that is upcoming that you know more and more is being learned about it each and every day and it was not really even a thing when I started raw foods in 1995 they didn't even know about the microbiome because they didn't have the testing equipment so that's my disclaimer and what I want to share with you guys before I get into my blood tests. I'm going to tell you guys, I'm giving you guys my opinions on my personal blood test, just sharing it and making it public to people because I know some people think you can't be healthy if you eat, you know, a raw vegan diet or a vegan diet. The fact of the matter is you, you can, but you, you got to pay attention, man. You have to have a properly designed diet, you know, whatever diet you're on or it's not going to be healthy. To me, that means lots of vegetables i teach gardening on my growing your greens channel on youtube on how you guys could grow your own nutrient dense plant foods so my goal is to get a blood test every year and for the last several years i have not been able to do that due to various situations including really i'm not going to get into them in this video um so i haven't done one for a while maybe i'll put a link to my one that i did last down below which actually was not as good as this one. This one actually is an improvement over the last one, but also because I've done blood tests over time, I have seen trends. So I like to compare my blood test to my previous blood test to always ensure that I'm maybe improving a little bit. Of course, probably the best blood test for me to compare to would be my younger brother, who's younger than me. And um, you know, I don't, I don't know what his blood tests are because we share like almost all the same genes, a few are different and stuff, but he's the closest genetic match to me. So we could compare the same genes, but of course I'm on a vastly different diet than he's on. I do know that, you know, he is uh, labeled clinically obese by his physician and he was maybe borderline diabetic uh, last time I spoke with him. Um, so, you know, he's not in the best of shape. Meanwhile, I'm not gonna say mine's totally stellar. I got some things I need to work on but for the most part, I'm happy with my blood tests, all right? So I was fasting when I did my blood tests. I stopped eating at like 9.30, and I didn't get an appointment until like 11.40 a.m. the following day. And uh, let's just get right into my testing. So I did my comprehensive metabolic panel. I'm not going to probably share all my results, but probably just some of the more important ones. The, my glucose was 80, and that's my fasting glucose level, so I'm not like, you know... My glucose doesn't spike. This tells me that I can handle, you know, eating plant foods and things like fruits. I do not recommend eating extracted sugar products. So uh, the normal range is 65 to 99. Uh, let's see. Also, the uh, another thing, some other things I want to mention on this uh, comprehensive metabolic panel, which is actually only like five bucks, was my urea uh, nitrogen BUN was eight. It was between uh, seven to 25 as a range. My creatinine is 0.84, and uh, the range is 0.7 to 1.33. My sodium was 131, the range is 135 to 146, so actually that's a little bit low, but I'm glad my sodium's a little bit low. Potassium's 4.7 in the normal range, 3.5 to 5.3. Chloride was 97, and that's low. The range is 98 to 110. 
I don't eat any kind of iodized sodium chloride salt, which is what most people, which most people use on a diet. And actually my goal is to like, just not eat any additional salt. I have an upcoming video where I share the best substitutes for sodium. Um, instead of eating salt, if you want to get better results in your diet, I already have a video why salt is not a health food. I don't care if you have crystal Himalayan salt, salt from the bottom of the earth. I don't care where it is, salt from the ocean. It's not a health food, guys, because it's mostly sodium. As much as it has some contaminant trace minerals, the way to get the trace minerals are from adding trace minerals into the garden. I add things like rock dust, ocean solids or ocean minerals. So actually my plants get some ocean water on them <laughs> and then they absorb my minerals and then I eat them. And if you put too much sodium on plants, guess what happens to them? They die. <laughs> so I try to get all the other minerals besides just the sodium that are very important. All right, moving on. Um, I had a recent video where I said, John, you look unwell you, because of color in your face, man. Your liver, you, you got a bad liver, man. So actually I did a he hepatitic function panel, which is a liver panel. And basically all the numbers, protein, total 7.0, albumin 4.6, globulin 2.4, you know, bilirubin 0.6, all in the normal range. My AST and ALT are both 16. My AST is uh, in the normal range, 10 to 35 is a range, and ALT is 16 in the normal range, 9 to 46. So my, uh, you know, liver function, probably pretty good. Uh, my kidneys, you know, of course, here's the thing, guys. Like, I'm interpreting my own blood test results. You should consult your doctor if you're not, like, you know, if you don't really know about this stuff. You know, to me... Most of the things in the normal range means it's good. You know, in life, you know, everybody thinks a little bit is good, more is better. Sometimes more is bad and sometimes less is bad. So sometimes you just kind of want to be normal. But the other thing is a lot of the normal ranges are just maybe average people walking around, which I definitely don't want to be. So that's why my, my numbers may skew higher or lower in some cases. And they just may be different, you know. So I don't, I don't really know about all that. Consult your doctor. All right, next test I got done was a renal function panel. And that tests your kidneys, and basically it was all in the normal range. So I'm good with that. And then the next thing I got tested was my iodine. That was a $30 test to check my iodine. Now here's the thing, iodine blood tests, it's totally not like really regulated. It's probably not even the most accurate way to measure your iodine status. There's other P tests and loading tests and all this other garbage. But I just wanted to kind of like just do it to see what's in my blood to see if I'm even going to be in range or low or high. Once again, iodine is a good, a good thing to have. We've got to have it. It's very important. You want to have too much, but you don't want to have too little. And in my case, I actually, for my serum, serum iodine, which may not be entirely accurate, may not be a good sign, so the deficiency or whatever, I'm 43. The range is 52 to 109. I eat sea vegetables probably a lot more than most raw uh, vegans out there, maybe even a lot more than most vegans because I eat it you know, regularly, small amounts, so I may need to... I may need to up that according to this because I would like to be in the normal range for my blood test. That being said, not the best way to measure in iodine, um, you know, levels. Next test was $45. This was my vitamin D. This is very important to me. Should be important to you. This is the vitamin D 25 hydroxy total. And the range is 30 to 100 and I was 26. So here's the thing. I'm sitting out in the sun today. I'm out in the garden most days. You know, and, and I tested myself in the winter time when I'm not out in the garden and the sun is at a lower kind of angle to me. Today I was out with my shirt off for like, I don't know, 15 minutes while I was drinking my juice and working in the garden for a little bit. So I try to take off my shirt as much as possible. Um, once again, it's also the winter time and I, I'm not a good supplement compliance person, <laughs> meaning I don't like to take mega doses of supplements or take them regularly. Um, I can't tell you that I've taken a supplement for probably about the last year at about 50% of the U.S. RDA for the vitamin D. So this lets me know that, hey, if I do a 50% of the U.S. RDA so I don't like overdose on D, I'm still a little bit low. Um, so I want to bring that a little bit higher, especially because immune system function is related to D from what I understand. And it says I have an insufficiency at present time, but at least I don't have a deficiency. I put a dropper of the vitamin D3 supplement that I take that's a liquid that I'm going to start dosing up like more often every day 
and uh, maybe try to also get more sun in. All right, next test is very interesting because I've heard some people say, vegans don't have enough CoQ10. And then, you know, you could read an article online and it gets you scared and you buy a CoQ10 supplement. I agree, if you don't, if you don't have sufficiency, try to correct the insufficiency through diet first and through how you eat first. And if it doesn't work, then you may need to supplement this um, coenzyme. You know, the normal range is over 0.35 and I was 0.85. So, I mean, that's, that's higher than the, the, low, the low end over normal. So I'm feeling good about that. Next page, we're gonna go over some other cool stuff. Homocysteine, homocysteine basically is a cardiovascular check. That was actually a $45 test. And uh, mine was 10.7, which is in the normal range. Um, it should be under 11.4. And it says homocysteine is increased by functional deficiency of folate or vitamin B12. Uh, testing for methylmalonic acid differentiates between these deficiencies. Other causes of increased homocysteine include renal failure, folate, antagonists, and exposure to nitrous, nitrous oxide. So my homocysteine is in the normal range. I think sometimes in the past it's maybe been a tad bit high. At least I got it in the low range, so this is good. That's something you you want to have kind of maybe more lower than higher optimally. All right, and that's the functional test of B12. So that's actually that's in my opinion is probably as a layperson probably more important to check the functional uses of B12 than just your B12 number. And the methylmonic acid test that was the test that cost me a hundred and five dollars. So. You know, I wanted to do it to see what's up because uh, if your homocysteine is uh, like high and your methylmalonic acid is high, that could be really bad. So my methylmalonic acid is uh, 173 and that's in the normal range. The range is 87 to 318. All right, next test I got done. I got a copper test done because there's all these different minerals I could select and I wanted to check some of my minerals to make sure I'm not like mineral deficient according to my blood analysis test. There's other ways to check minerals and stuff. And so I did a test for copper to make sure I'm not getting too much copper or too little copper in my copper level. That was a $15 test. It was 92, the range is 70 to 175. I also checked my uh, CK total, which is uh, creatinine kinase, and my total was 64. The range is 44 to 196. I also checked my CRP, C-reactive protein. To me, this is very important. Uh, the C-reactive protein is like the inflammation in your body. It's the HSCRP, so that's a little bit, maybe a little bit different for the CRP. That was 0.4, and that's supposed to be under 1.0. And then now I have the CRP, which is a different test. You gotta look up what it means at all. Um, anyways, the standard CRP was 0.5 and the reference range is under 8.0. You know, this talks about the inflammation in my body. I have very low, I would say, C-reactive protein. I think this is a good thing. And I personally believe, you know, this is because I eat a very high polyphenol-rich diet. It's my personal opinion because I eat a nutrient-dense diet. Focus on micronutrients, not just macronutrients, right? Lots of greens, very important. Uh, let's see, another thing I che che checked was my hemoglobin A1C. I think last time I did it, it was maybe a little bit high, showing that my standard blood test, if you're just looking at it from a standard doctor's without knowing my full history, like, oh man, you could be pre-diabetic and all this crap. So I tested it this time, and my hemoglobin A1C uh, is 5.1 and it should be under 5.7 and I think the main difference between this time and last time I got checked was I've reduced my consumption of dried fruits in the evening eating late and dried fruits at night causes me to gain weight and causes my body not to work properly <laughs> so don't eat too many dried fruits so try to eat whole fruits instead or something else all right next test I got was my PSA total which kind of checked your prostate $15 test. Mine was 0.45 and it should be uh, lower than 4.0. So that's like pretty low. I guess that's like um, your PSA is like if you have prostate cancer and stuff. So that's good. <laughs> now another thing that's very important to me, once again, minerals. I checked my selenium. That was a $35 test and all these tests add up, man. 
And selenium is a thing that could be deficient and it actually it's very critical for your immune function. And if you're not paying attention to your diet, you may have low selenium content. Some people just would take a supplement to fix it. I don't like to take supplements. My goal is to get it from my food. So once again, I eat mineral rich enhanced foods that I add trace minerals into. Um, but I also eat some Brazil nuts and you gotta make sure you get Brazil nuts from the right country because Brazil nuts from the wrong country won't contain selenium as shown by some studies that I've looked into. Anyways, uh, and I, the current Brazil nuts I get are actually from Costco. Um, but I switch them up actually. Also, those are the shelled and then I got in shell ones that I'm not sure where they're from. Anyways, my selenium is 147, the range is 63 to 160. Once again, you probably don't wanna be too high on selenium. It could be quite toxic. So I'm like, all right, selenium is good. Maybe continue with the rate of Brazil nut consumption I eat and not like go crazy on them. Uh, next test I did was magnesium. Magnesium could cause all kinds of issues if you're low in magnesium. They have magnesium roll-on and all this stuff because it could cause like pains and all this kind of junk that I'm not really too sure about. Anyways, my magnesium was 2.1. It should be between 1.5 and 2.5. Also got a CBC test. All the white blood cells and all this stuff. Neurofills, all these things I don't really know about. Hemoglobin, um, hemocrit white blood cell count, red blood cell count, all in the normal range except one was my platelet count was 407 and the range is 140 to 400. So that's a little bit high. I mean, it's seven points out. I'm not really concerned about it. Um, I know my dad like donated platelets. So if I go to the blood bank, they probably want me. Next test we're gonna share is my vitamin B12 and folate test. That was a $30 test. And uh, that was important to me because I want to make sure I got enough B12. That's, you know, the main thing that vegans or even non-vegans could be deficient in if they're not eating fortified foods and i don't eat fortified foods for b12 mark my words i try not to eat any fortified foods unless somebody's sneaking in one on me <laughs> i don't even eat fortified nutritional use which is like a really bad fortified food in my opinion my b12 taken a small supplement a dose every day once again kind of like the same uh, thing on the vitamin D. I take small doses of B12, not mega doses. Um, maybe I should probably increase that. But anyways, normal range is 200 to 1100. Mine's 333, um, right in the normal range. Also, as evidenced by my homocysteine and methylmonic acid test, I'd say I'm pretty, pretty good, but I might want to get my B12 up a little bit more and maybe try to supplement a little bit more. Next, very important for your B12 to work properly in your body is the folate. Not folic acid. I don't take folic acid supplements. I don't recommend you guys eat folic acid, which is in fortified foods. I recommend you get folate from foliage. I never, I never could say that word right. Foliage from leafy greens contains lots of folate. So hopefully if I'm eating my leafy greens, my test will not be deficient. What do you guys think it is? All right, I'll tell you the reference range. Low is, bet low is under 3.4. Borderline is 3.4 to 5.4. Normal is above 5.4. Did I get 5.4 or 6 or 7 or 10, maybe doubling it? No, like tripled. <laughs> the normal range, I'm at 17.1. So that's high. I have higher levels of folate than most people. Probably because of my green consumption and plant food consumption. All right, next question. Iron. Am I deficient in iron because I'm eating vegan? I'm not eating meat that has preformed iron. Now, I want to let you guys know that in my opinion, based on what I've learned, Having too much iron is not a good thing. If you ever, I lived by the ocean when I was growing up and the car would get scratched, right? And the iron would get, and the steel would get scratched. Steel has iron and then it would rust, right? Excess iron could cause excess oxidation in your body, cause you to age prematurely. So iron is the thing we want enough of, not too little, not too much. Our body needs enough to properly function, you know, with the blood and all this stuff. My iron total is 74. The, it's in the normal range, which is between 50 and 180. You know, so I'm good. All right, oh yeah, this is where I have the most challenges, which is not super surprising to me because I've also seen this in my past blood tests. So this is not new. I'm gonna preface this by saying everybody has genetic predispositions and can deal with certain foods and other foods differently, depending on probably your ethnic heritage, where you grew up and your, probably just your body. Everybody's body is a bit different. And uh, so that's what I'm going to preface this by saying. In addition, I will say that my dad is on blood pressure 
medications. So that also that means there's a family connection that this these situations may run in my family as well. So my cholesterol total is a 212, and that's high, especially for a vegan. Uh, it should be below 200, so I'm like 12 points, a little bit too high on my cholesterol. So is that bad? Well, you know, I want to try to get that down. I want to be in the normal range. I don't want to have too high cholesterol. Traditionally, I have seen me always, pretty much on every blood test I've done, it's always higher, uh, you know, than a vegan should be. Some vegans are like 150 and all this stuff and maybe even lower, you know. But here's the thing. Cholesterol is like a master hormone. You don't want it too low or that could like imbalance other things. Also, again, you don't want it too high either. Now, my uh, HDL was 49, which is in the normal range. Triglycerides, 145, should be below 150. Last time my triglycerides were too high. So I've improved for my last blood test. Now, the other thing I'll be honest with you guys, my LDL cholesterol was too high. It was 136 and it should be below 100, which is my uh, desirable range so yeah and then it was calculated using the martin hopkins calculation so that's uh, supposed to be fairly accurate so what am i going to do i'm probably going to number one i need to do more cardio exercise i admit i'm cardio exercise deficient i have buddies that go out and do more cardio exercise than me but then they maybe don't eat as healthy as me so you know once again we got to have a balance in our life and i need to do more cardio exercise so if you ever see me out in the street like, hey, John, let's go run around the block, man. <laughs> I, need to, I went on a nice bike ride with my buddy the other day. Um, but, yeah, so I need to get more cardio uh, exercise. Now, the other thing I need to do is I feel my body is particularly sensitive to eating saturated fats. I don't eat a lot of saturated fats. My favorite fat, my favorite, one of my favorite fats and foods actually are coconuts. But as I could see uh, from past blood tests and this blood test, eating too many coconuts is not a good thing. So, we, uh, so for me personally, you know, I'm going to reduce my coconut consumption. If you're a vegan and your cholesterol is too low and you want to bring it up a little bit, maybe you should increase your coconut consumption, right? So yeah, that's something that I really need to kind of get on and I'm going to try to do minimal coconuts. It's going to be difficult for me because I love the different aspects of the coconuts from the, you know, making coconut milk out of the young coconut flesh or blending up young flesh and making coconut yogurt, which I ate a half a jar one day and another half a jar the other day, which is actually right before this test, so that actually that could have played a role. Maybe I was dosing up on coconuts too much before the test, so I should do coconut free for a month and then redo my test to see what's up. All right, next test I did was a sed rate. I think that's also another kind of inflammation kind of test. And it should be uh, below or equal to 20, and mine was two. So that's like pretty doggone low in my opinion. That was a $10 test, my testosterone test to find out what your testosterone, if you're a man, <laughs> it's going to cost you 30 bucks. And uh, I think a lot of meat eaters may have low T and maybe supplementing T. My T is quite healthy. Anyway, let's go over the range. The range is 250 to 827, right? What is mine? Okay, I'm a vegan. Is it going to be like 300 because I'm a vegan and I eat actually like mostly Fruits and vegetables is my dominant plant sources that I eat. Is it going to be low? Am I going to have like, like no sex drive? That could happen. I don't know what your vegan diet is. I mean, that might happen to you. But on my vegan diet and what I'm doing, my testosterone is 933, guys. Actually, so it's labeled high. It's like 100 points over the reference range. You know, you, I don't know. People think testosterone high is good. There's probably bad things about high testosterone, but I'm gonna tell you guys, I got a good sex drive. All my male parts work really good for a long time. <laughs> and I'm currently single too. So yeah, just letting you guys know. All right, next I tested my TSH, which is like a thyroid test to kind of check to make sure your thyroid's working properly. Um, it's a basic test, $10 TSH. Range is 0.4 to 4.5. Mine was 2.48. Not really going to get into all that stuff because I don't really know about all that stuff. But as long as I'm in the normal range, I think I'm good. I think my thyroid health is pretty good. Uh, uric acid has to do with like uh, gout and pain in your joints, all this garbage. And the range is 4.0 to 8.0. That was a $5 test. I was 5.3, so kind of right in the middle. Another thing I got tested this time was my vitamin A. You know, a lot of people say 
If you're vegan, you're not gonna have enough vitamin A. I do not take a vitamin A supplement at all. You know, some supplements like B12 is water soluble, so if you take too much, you're basically gonna pee it out for the most part. That being said, some supplements that are fat soluble, like vitamin A and D, you take too much, it's gonna accumulate, could cause some issues. You know, I don't rely on a vitamin A supplement to get my vitamin A, I rely on the foods I eat and for them to be properly converted to vitamin A in my body so I could see that my body is functioning properly when I eat enough things like beta carotene. They say eating carrots is good for your eyes. Well, beta carotene has the pro vitamin A, which is the beta carotene that your body converts into vitamin A should it need to if your body is working properly. So vitamin A, what was my, the reference range is 38 to 98. That was a $40 test. Vitamin A also important for your immune system. I got a lot of immune system kind of uh, indicators this test because especially with what's going around in the world right now, I want to make, my sh make sure my immune system is strong as possible. So my vitamin A, 68, it's kind of like uh, pretty much right in the middle, I'd say a little bit higher than the middle. And so I don't have an issue vitamin A on a vegan diet for my body converting, eating my specific foods. Now if you eat a junk food vegan diet, you're going to be deficient in vitamin A, you know, I'm not the expert on that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't eat a junk food diet if you paid me money. <laughs> Next page, getting down to the end here. All right, another test I did was vitamin E. Another people say you need to eat eggs, you need to eat all these animal foods for vitamin E. Can't get good vitamin E from plant foods. Once again, I do not supplement vitamin E. Fat soluble, don't like to supplement those fat soluble vitamins. What is mine? That was a $35 test. Normal range is 5.7 to 19.9, right? What am I? Am I like, I'm a vegan, vitamin E. I got like six. No, maybe I got like 12 because it's like double like the bottom range. No, man, I got 17.1. People call me unhealthy just because they look at my face on my picture and I have to be bloated that day or I had a bad day, went through some, you know, situations and maybe over ate a couple nights before. I put videos up like every week so you can see how I transition. And sometimes I, you know, maybe have a little bit more weight gain around the Christmas season, depression, crap. I'm dealing with stuff in my life too. I'm not going to say I'm perfect. My blood test ain't perfect. <laughs> All right, another thing very important to me, uh, last thing I'm going to share with you guys today is my zinc status. Zinc, trace mineral, very important for your immune health. Um, I do not supplement zinc regularly. I may take it on some random day because like, I think I need more zinc. But my normal goal is to get the zinc and all my nutrients from my food first. Link down below to the video I made where I do a chronometer on all the food I eat in a day basically. And you can see like all my levels are basically high off the chart except for a few like vitamin D and B12. And this is how I prefer to get my nutrients, right? I would encourage you guys to eat as much whole plant foods as you can. I will also say that this is, you know, it does take me some time because every day I'm working at doing food prep for one to two hours per day in general. Some days I take it off because I have enough food prep to already made because I do batch food prep, making juices, and I make, you know, my salad meals in batch food prep. You know, I have videos on how I do that on this channel. Uh, so, yeah, so my zinc, you know, Zinc is uh, the range is 60 to 130 and I was 67 so that's right in the normal range on the lower end so I might want to maybe eat more zinc rich foods I try not to eat a lot of you know seeds because I don't want to eat too many seeds but maybe I might start eating more pumpkin watermelon um, sunflower seeds because those foods tend to have higher zinc content than other plant-based foods also I may want to get a zinc supplement to add to my garden so that my plants could uptake it and then I could eat my plants and get the zinc as well. So there you have it. That's pretty much my blood tests for 2022. Um, just share with you guys my critique on my personal blood. Once again, please consult your doctor for your blood test. I'm just to sit telling you guys what I think and I'm not a doctor. Um, I choose to take the health into my own hands. And, you know, I may reach out to some doctors and get their opinions on my blood test and how I could optimize it. Um, but, you know, I read a lot of studies and things like that myself to try to dial in to make sure I'm doing a plant-based diet as healthy as possible. There are surely ways you could do a vegan diet unhealthy, a raw vegan diet unhealthy. I think my main takeaways and tips for you guys are to eat a wide variety of food, 
uh, don't limit yourself to you know certain kinds of foods. Eat lots of vegetables. Probably my biggest tip is eat lots of vegetables, man. Vegetables have a lot more nutrient density and micronutrients than fruits. And I see a lot of people eating, you know, maybe a lot of fruits and not enough vegetables, or maybe eating too much beans and rice and not enough vegetables. So across the board, I think just everybody on the planet needs to eat more vegetables, especially leafy green vegetables. Once again, that's my channel is called Growing Your Greens on YouTube so that you guys can learn how to grow your own fruits and vegetables and learn to grow them in the best way possible. If you guys enjoyed this episode, hey, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Also, be sure to share this video with somebody else you think it could help. That helps out the YouTube algorithm, get this video out to more people to share that vegans don't have to be deficient if they do it properly. Also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out my new upcoming episodes. I've come out every five to seven days. You never know where I show up or what you'll be learning on my YouTube channel. And make sure you click the little bell to get notified as my new videos come out. And finally, be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are a wealth of knowledge. Over 600 episodes at this time on this YouTube channel dedicated to teach you guys all about eating more plant food so that you could get healthier. So with that, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables. They're always the best. <laughs>